you'd be familiar with the phrase, practice makes perfect. But what if your practice is plagued by bad habits that are hindering your progress? In this video, I'll explore four bad habits that I'm sure many artists struggle with, and I'll provide some advice on how to overcome them. And while I do that, you can watch me paint this geranium in watercolour. Okay, bad habit number one, being too self-critical. And I know I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I hear that little voice in my head that tells me that I'm not good enough. I try to drown it out with positive thoughts, but it keeps buzzing in there like a mosquito on steroids. Self-criticism can be useful to help you grow, but too much of it can be unhelpful to your work and overall mental health. I'll often finish a painting and I'll think to myself, eh, no, I can do better than that. I can see all my mistakes that I made and I worry that if I put it out there to the world, others will see the mistakes as well and then people will criticise me. I doubt myself like that and I know that thinking that way drains my self-confidence. It makes me feel less motivated to work and it stifles my creativity. And I worry that it probably prevents me from pursuing new ideas and techniques. I'm a bit of a perfectionist and that often drains me of my creativity as well. Whenever I get a new idea to do something for my business, it might be, say, I don't know, a new blog post I want to write for my website. I want it to be perfect. And I know it will take a lot of work to get it that way. So then I end up putting it off and I procrastinate about it and I don't end up writing it at all. To avoid being too self-critical, here are a few tips that I have. Number one, set realistic goals for yourself. Instead of pushing yourself too hard and striving for perfection, Set some achievable and measurable goals for yourself. And then focus on your progress, not just your results. I keep all my failed paintings. I think over the years I may have ripped a few of them off my board in disgust, but most of them I've kept. Sometimes I'll get them out and have a look at them and I can see how much I have grown. And that is worth focusing on. I may not be where I want to be, but I've come so far from where I was. I've made a lot of progress. Here's another tip. Be kind to yourself and practice self-compassion. A lot of us are kinder to other people than we are to ourselves. Learn to accept that you are imperfect and that you make mistakes. It's a natural part of the artistic process and making mistakes helps you to grow. You're not going to improve if you don't make mistakes. Learn from them and use them to your advantage. Don't let those mistakes make you wallow in self-pity. Don't let them paralyze you. So set realistic goals for yourself, focus on your progress and practice self-compassion. Bad habit number two, comparing yourself to others. Now, it's not necessarily a bad habit for artists to compare their work to others because studying the work of other artists can be a great way to learn and grow. I've talked about that in other videos. But if you are constantly comparing your work to others, it might have a negative effect on your creative process and your self-esteem. Mark Twain said, comparison is the death of joy. When you look at another artist's work that you admire, you are usually looking at their very best work, work that they've spent years and years practicing and perfecting. You may not know how far along they are in their creative journey and how much time they've spent building their skill. You may not realise that that particular piece of art that you admire was preceded by five attempts that failed. If you've only been painting for a few years, 
and you look at the work of an artist who's been practicing for decades, it can lead to feelings of self-doubt and insecurity. If you measure your work against someone else's, you might feel that your work isn't good enough or that you will never reach the same level of success. This will probably lead to burnout and a loss of passion for your art. If you find yourself feeling like that, stop doing it. Instead, compare your art to your art. This circles back to what I was saying about keeping failed paintings. Get out your failed paintings that you did when you first started and compare them to what you're doing today. I'm sure you will see growth. I look back at my earliest watercolour paintings and I cringe when I see them. When I did them, I thought they were lovely. I thought, wow, I can't believe I painted that. But now I can see how ordinary they are. I can see all their problems. I can see how I would paint them differently now. Even paintings that I did a year ago, I can see my skills have improved since then. So don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to you. Bad habit number three is fear of failure. And this is a big one for me. Fear of failure can hold you back from taking creative risks and trying new things. It can hold you back from reaching your full potential and it will limit your creative growth. Fear of failure can lead to a lack of experimentation and risk taking. And if you are too scared of failing all the time, you will stop yourself from discovering and trying new techniques and styles. You might also be less likely to share your work with others or pursue opportunities to showcase your art and that will prevent you from receiving valuable feedback and possible sales. If you were worried about failing all the time, you were going to limit your potential. You will feel stressed and anxious and it will stop you from learning and pursuing your goals. I have a fear of painting portraits in watercolour. And for a long time, I told myself that I couldn't do it. Don't even try, Louise. Don't go there. But I pushed that fear aside and I did try. In fact, I even shared my first portrait painting session here on YouTube. A long time ago, I read the book Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. And it has made such a difference in the way I live my life. It gave me confidence when I didn't have any. Whenever I feel fearful of something, I say to myself, Louise, feel the fear and do it anyway. I try to replace those negative words in my head with positive ones, and I try to let go of the fear. I take my power back. So to prevent that fear of failure from allowing you to reach your full potential, always realize that failure is a natural part of the artistic process. Failure leads to growth. I know because recently I tried landscape painting in watercolour for the first time and I failed five times. I spent two days painting the same painting over and over and I had no success. But after failing five times, I tried again. On the sixth time, I changed my technique and I succeeded finally. I didn't give up. I learnt something from each painting. So don't be afraid to embrace failure. Reframe your mind because it's how you will grow as an artist. Learn to view those failures as an opportunity to grow rather than as a sign of weakness or inadequacy. Here's something I say to all my students. Focus on the process, not the outcome. Painting and drawing is fun. It can be a pleasure. It's a way to escape your thoughts for a while. If you let go of the outcome and just enjoy the process of being creative, then your fear of failure won't hold you back. I love doing jigsaw puzzles. I find them really relaxing. But I don't do the jigsaw puzzle because I want a finished puzzle. I do it because I love the process of finding all the pieces and putting them together. 
Think of your art in that way. I know we all want a finished painting that we're proud of, but the reality is that we are often disappointed with our efforts. I think about 25% of my paintings fail. So don't feel bad about that. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off and start again and just enjoy the process of painting. Don't let fear paralyze you into inaction. And finally, bad habit number four, procrastination. And the other three bad habits lead to this one. You are too self-critical of your skills because you keep comparing yourself to others and then that produces a fear of failure, which in turn causes you to spend too much time avoiding what you should be doing. Instead of practicing your painting, you spend hours scrolling through Instagram or you shop online for things that you don't need. I know I do it too, but just know this. When you procrastinate, all you are doing is delaying your own progress. To quote Benjamin Franklin, you may delay, but time will not. So get out those brushes and start splashing some paint around. And here's my finished painting. I'll be making a voiced over tutorial of this painting for my patrons on Patreon. I'd love you to join us there if you'd like to improve your painting skills. I also have prints of this painting available on my website. And with every purchase, we give back to the planet by planting a tree in Australia through our partnership with One Tree Planted. I've put the links in the description of this video. I'm guilty of each of those bad habits, not just with my creative career, but with my life in general. I have a bookshelf in the house full of self-help books, and many of them have been really helpful. I hope the information I've given you here resonates with you. And if you struggle with any of those bad habits, know that you're not alone. I hope that you have the determination to work your way through them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. And action. I can't see your hand. Too much. You always do too much. Go that way a little bit. Other way. Too no. much. Now I'm back just where there, I was. Just there, just there. That's fine. In this video, I'll explore four bad habits that I'm sure many artists, artists, yeah. And I'll provide some advice on how to, to, to stop making them. I have a bookshelf in the house. How should I do that? And if you struggle with any of those patterns,